Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and once again, lovely greetings from the Brake Shop here at Cargolux. Now this is the follow-up to the anti-skid system video as today we'll be talking about the auto brake system. How does it work and what the A380's brake system has to do with the winter sport curling. No brakes for this one. Let's get started. Six ninety-three. Does the ramp put you in first of the tug? And I know I'm asking a crazy question, like they know, but I figured I'd ask. No, we're following Delta Three. Tug is last. Well, thank you, Delta Six Ninety-Three. In general, pilots operate the wheel-mounted brakes of their aircraft by pushing the toe section of the rudder pedals forward. Now the braking and therefore the deceleration itself are achieved by one of the hydraulic systems providing the wheel-based hydraulically actuated brakes with pressure. Now however, especially braking is a process which can be taken care of by software at some time allowing the pilots to focus on other things while performing a landing. Now today's airliners are equipped with a so-called auto brake system which can be capable of managing all necessary braking in the longitudinal direction, hence helping not only while landing but also whilst taking off. Yes, even during takeoff run there is a reasonable use for such braking systems, but more about that in a minute. For this video I will base the explanations on the Boeing 747 and its particular system. Now that you know that the auto brake is a very helpful system for the pilots, let's see how they can activate it and what settings and functions they can choose from. Now on Boeing models you activate and select the setting with the auto brake selector. Now on the 747-400 it's located on the center pedestal below the center audio panel. On the 747-8, the same panel is located underneath the gear lever, but in both cases they have the same labeling for their various settings, RTO, OFF, DISARM, AUTO BRAKE 1, 2, 3 and 4 and MAX AUTO. Now first of all, let's have a look at the options you as a pilot have when coming in for landing. Now please note that the AUTO BRAKE alone does not affect thrust reverses or spoiler deployment. Its one and only objective is to trigger the wheel braking demanded by the pilots. Now the settings 1 to 4 and max auto represent deceleration rates at which the system slows down the aircraft. Whether the preset deceleration can be fully achieved depends on the runway conditions and environmental factors. Now during the descent, the pilot monitoring will read out the descent checklist with one of the items asking for the auto brake setting which then needs to be confirmed by the pilot flying calling out as a auto brake 3 for example. The pilot flying sets the auto brake to the specific setting in regard to the runway length and runway conditions using his landing distance calculation tool on his EFB. Now once touching down, the wheel spin sensors sense that the wheels have spun up and the auto brake starts acting with minimum delay. Any manual braking will override this automated process and will disarm the auto brake immediately. Now this is why you sometimes hear the pilot calling out manual braking after rolling out, flicking the auto brake selector automatically to the disarm position. Now yes, you could disarm the auto brake system by placing the selector manually to disarm, but pilots wouldn't reach to the selector during rollout phase as this is not where their eyes should be. Monitor your speed and eyes on the runway. Also interesting to know is if you override the auto brake system manually with the tip of your toes on the brake pedals and let's say you had the max auto position selected, you will be able to increase the brake pressure even more and therefore the deceleration rate above that setting, meaning max auto is not the maximum pressure available. And putting the selector into the off position will deactivate and reset the auto brake system entirely. So far so good, but I told you the auto brake also plays an important role while taking off. 
Now to see why, we have to take a closer look at the setting I didn't talk about so far, the RTO mode. RTO stands for Rejected Takeoff. Now depending on the aircraft model, the Before Taxi or the Before Takeoff checklist states to place the Auto Brake Selector into the specific mode. Now with that, you will activate the system without engaging it. Now the way these systems monitor the takeoff and decide whether to engage or not differs a bit from system to system. Now in case of the 747, the previously armed auto brake system detects a sudden pullback of the throttle levers to their idle position as this would be the case if the pilot sees the need to abort the takeoff roll. Now, if the aircraft travels at less than 85 knots ground speed, there will be no engagement of the auto brake and the pilot would have to brake manually. Now, once being accelerated over 85 knots ground speed, the auto brake will provide full braking power, hence forcing the aircraft to perform an emergency stop. Now, side note, within the Airbus A320 family, the button for Max Auto and RTO are actually the same deceleration setting. <laughs> but more about reject takeoff and the entire procedure, etc. in an upcoming video. So this briefly explains the functionality of the auto brake system, but engineers at Airbus have gone a bit further. Now they've developed an additional software, which they named Brake to Vacate. Now currently the software is certified and used on the Airbus A380 and the new Airbus A350. Now the basic idea is to prevent the aircraft from overrunning the runway obviously, but it is in addition to that able to calculate and to some extent command the necessary brake inputs and thrust reverser use to exit a runway at a pre-selected turnoff point. And it works like that. The pilots provide the auto flight computer with the selected runway and its reported surface conditions and preset desired turnoff point where they would like to exit the runway. I don't know, for example, if they have the shortest taxiway time to the gate. Now, in this case, the calculated brake and thrust reverser combination leads to the perfect turnoff velocity at the preset turnoff point or taxiway. Now, where have you seen this kind of action before? Curling, where the trajectory is that your own stone stops as close to a specific point as possible. Now, with the exception that the stone is an Airbus A380 and the pilots don't use brooms to manage the velocity, but brakes and thrust reverses. Now, once the aircraft reaches a safe turnoff speed, the BTV is disconnected automatically, and this would be the case at 10 knots ground speed if the exit is perpendicular to the runway and at 40 to 50 knots if the exit is a high speed exit. Now besides its safety benefits, the use of this system reduces wear on the tires and brakes by 20% and reduces the time of the aircraft occupying the runway area with the aim of increasing the airport's efficiency. Well done Airbus I would say. That's it for today. If you have any more questions about the auto brake system or some other aviation related question, please be sure to check out my other videos or ask in the comment section below for the chance to have your question answered. Thank you very much for your time. Here is your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, and don't forget, a good pilot is always learning, wishing all the best. See you next week, your Captain Joe.